Welcome to the new section advanced task features. The first topic in this section is persisting data. So in this video we'll go over some examples of persisting data frames to save up on your computation time. So let's get started. First I'll uh, fire up a local uh, DAS cluster. Then I'll import DAS data frame as DF. Okay, that is already done. So no need for that. So we'll be looking into the GDP data for countries. So we have this data for GDP. So you have the country GDP here. So this is India. This is GDP in dollars for 2017 and so on and so forth. So this is data for multiple countries. So we'll uh, use a glob pattern to load the multiple CSVs in one go. So you have this unnamed zero column, country, GDP, and here. Over the describe function, I'll uh, try to visualize the task graph. So we get this. Now that is not what we'll be focusing on for this video. I'll just show you the top five rows of the data. Now we have this unnamed column, which is of no use to us since that is essentially the index. So we'll use drop method for data frame and we get this. Now when I compute the group by over uh, country and get the max GDP and visualize the task graph, you'll see something strange here. So drop is again uh, called even though we did that computation here and you'll see that pandas.readtxt is also called even though that was done way back over here. So let's take a look at another example. Now what I'll do is I'll create a new data frame which basically has the GDP data without the country Japan. Now if I visualize that I'll get the same problem. So read txt is happening again then drop is happening then the filtering is happening. Now as you might have guessed the problem here is that since this graph is lazily evaluated so every time we try to click compute something it starts from the beginning. Now a better workaround is that you persist the computation in memory. The idea is suppose if you are content with say removing the column and formatting or removing the entries for Japan. So now if I compute the say GDP. Okay, so I have this function. Which takes in the country name and uh, returns country name is space the country name. Now when I you get a DAS series structure and when I visualize this you'll see there is no no read txt happening no drop it's directly taking the data and applying the function now had i done this over say the original column so the original data frame without persisting this would still be there the pandas dot read txt and drop so we are saving up i mean if i know that okay this much filtering or this much pre-processing is done i won't need to do that again and i don't need to do it again so you can persist it in your cluster. So this is an advantage of efficiently using memory and persisting data frames. So try to look into the task graphs and see where you can uh, save up on your computation and memory in your task cluster. So for reference you can refer these links for more information about persisting memory and uh, more information about how to handle memory in a distributed setting. That's it for this uh, video. In the next video we'll be combining dask with futures